Welcome to the School of Wisdom, a weekly podcast produced for the Bible Bistro, studying the book of Proverbs chapter by chapter. My son, hear the instruction of your father. Forsake not the law of your mother, for they shall be an ornament of grace to your head and chains about your neck. Now, this week's lesson. Hey there, friends. Welcome back to the School of Wisdom podcast here in the Bible Bistro. The Bible Bistro hosts only tariff and duty-free Bible studies, so get as much as you want. And we've got a lot here. I mean, we've got the School of Wisdom podcast, which uploads every week on Thursday, studying the book of Proverbs, chapter by chapter. We also have the Creek Road Baptist Pulpit, which features sermons preached at Creek Road Baptist Church. That uploads on Wednesdays. And we have our flagship program, Daily Dose Radio, which is a five-minute-a-day, five-day-a-week studying the Psalms verse-by-verse podcast. So if you want a little salter in your day, then come on over to the Bible Bistro every day. We've got that for you. Today, we're looking at chapter 13 in the book of Proverbs. So Proverbs chapter 13, this is a chapter about wisdom and wealth, principally. There are other things here, but those feature prominently in this 13th chapter. This chapter is divided into two parts. We have the instruction of a father in verses 1 through 13, and then we have the instruction of the wise man in verses 14 through 25. If you would like to see an outline of this chapter, which will be very helpful if you can, if you want to study it with me, and even if you don't, it would be helpful if you just want to do a study on your own without listening to the podcast, you can download these outlines at my-dailydose.com, get a copy for yourself. It's a PDF. You just go to the blog page, find the outline for the chapter that you want to study. Go out. Use the, there's a link in the, in the blog that says Outline for Proverbs, whatever the chapter is. You'll find a link there. Click on that link. The PDF will pop right up. You can print it off and use it at your leisure. I hope you'll use it as you go through with me. I'd just love to sit here and study the Word of God with you. So this is so good, too. Boy, I tell you, the Proverbs is so powerful, and it just applies to everyday life right now. This is not by and by. We're not studying some ancient wisdom that is no longer applicable to today's to today's world. This is right now uh, applicable to everything that you do. And we're looking at verses 1 through 13 here at the beginning. So the instruction of a father will begin here in verse 1. A wise son heareth his father's instruction, but a scorner heareth not rebuke. So you see how wisdom, right off the bat, we start with it. The wise son. So we're going to talk about this. Now, you know that in chapters 1 through 9, we had my son lessons, like almost every chapter. It was a my, my son lesson in there somewhere. And either my son or my children or children listen. So we had my son lessons all over the place in Proverbs from chapter 1 to chapter 9. And in chapter 10, we had the change. In chapter 10, the change was from the classroom where we had the instructor teaching us to we went to the library so we could look through the catalog of all of Solomon's Proverbs. And now we're finding that each chapter contains specific themes that deal with certain things. And so here we, we're going to talk about wisdom today, and we start right off the bat with a wise son. What does a wise son do? This is descriptive of wisdom. Wisdom listens. A wise son hears his father's instruction, but a scorner heareth not rebuke. So a scorner is not going to listen to instruction. He's not going to hear the rebuke of the wise son of the father, and so you know he's going to go on his own way. But the wise son hears it; he's going to do something with it. Now we learn about speech here in verse two, in verse three, and in verse five. We have these this theme of speech all sort of clumped together here, and right in the middle of it, in verse four, we have a little proverb about work. A man shall eat good by the fruit of his mouth, but the soul of the transgressors shall eat violence. He that keepeth his mouth keepeth keepeth his life, but he that openeth wide his lips shall have destruction. And then verse 5, A righteous man hateth lying, but a wicked man is loathsome 
and cometh to shame. All right, so we have speech here, the theme of speech, and how to use your mouth three different times. Remember, a wise son hears instruction. So let's hear this instruction about using our mouth. A wise man eats good by the fruit of his mouth. He that keeps his mouth keeps his life. A righteous man hates lying. So here we have instruction for us to keep, but you notice the other side of it goes right along with the scorner. Here's not rebuke. What's the scorner going to do? The soul of the transgressors shall eat violence. He that opens wide his lips shall have destruction. Notice that is paired with he that keeps his mouth, keeps his life. Isn't that interesting? The theme of life and death, is we're going to see it here, featuring again prominently in this chapter, just like it has featured prominently in every chapter. And then, the righteous man hates lying. What's a wicked man do? Well, he's loathsome and comes to shame. Why? Because he lies. How do you use your mouth? And can't you hear your dad or your granddad telling you this? I can hear my dad saying it. And he would definitely say this to me. You know, he hit one of his favorite phrases was, you know, engage your mind before you engage your mouth. Always think before you speak was the idea there. But he loved that little phrase and he would tell it to me all the time, especially when I would blurt something out stupidly, which, you know, teenagers and boys, uh, they're apt to do even young men. Right in the middle of that whole piece about speech was verse 4, the soul of the sluggard desires and has nothing but the soul of the diligent shall be made fat. Notice that it's the soul of, the soul of the sluggard, the soul of the diligent. Now, we're talking about something that affects not just the pocketbook or the belly, but it affects the very soul of the person. We're talking about soul care here, and it's connected to work. So work has that effect, you know. It has a a way, especially for men, I think. Work has a way of of making peace with the soul. It it helps the soul find balance and find that middle ground, you know. And here we have it in the proverb, the soul of the sluggard. It desires because he's a sluggard. He doesn't have anything. He's not going to work for it. But the soul of the diligent is made fat. Why? Because he's working. He's doing something. He's diligent in he in whatever it is that he's applying himself to. And then we've already seen this as a theme in chapter 12 and in chapter 11, especially chapter 11. We had it as a theme, righteousness and the righteous man. But now we're going to have righteous. And you'll notice if you have the outline that I have this righteous slash ness because it's either righteousness or the righteous person. If you notice, if you have the outline, you're looking at it, verse 6 and verse 9, we have one of each here. Righteousness keepeth him that is upright in the way, but wickedness overthroweth the sinner. The light of the righteous rejoices, but the lamp of the wicked shall be put out. So you see the goodness here of being righteous, and that is in right standing with God. We're not talking about a righteousness that we produce. We're talking about maintaining the way according to God's word. Righteousness will keep him that is upright. The light of the righteous rejoices. And that light, we've seen that over and over again. We see it in the Psalter. We see it also in Proverbs. That light that grows brighter from day to day. We're told that in the Psalms. Here we have it again, the light of the righteous. It is rejoicing. It's because the righteous is walking according to the light. But the lamp of the wicked shall be put out. Why? Because they don't walk according to light. They walk according to their own desire. And what's the light? The light is the light of God's word. Proverbs chapter 119 tells us that. Your word is a, a lamp unto my feet and a light to my path. So we know what the light is. We know that's why the righteous have it. The other thing that's a uh, Quite a major theme here in this chapter is wealth, and we have it here twice in 7 and in 8. Also, if you're looking at the outline, you'll notice how I have these uh, highlighted with different colors and then set aside so that you can quickly scan down through them and see, you know, see these pieces, all these pieces, and how how they put together. So you can kind of follow the different things that are being said here. Wealth is a prominent theme. 
We have it twice here in verse 7 and in verse 8, and then you'll see it again in verse 11. So three times in this very first section we have this idea of wealth. Three times in this very first section we have the theme of speech. So let's read these verses on wealth. There is that maketh himself rich, yet hath nothing. There is that maketh himself poor, yet hath great riches. The ransom of a man's life are his riches, but the poor hears not rebuke. And then verse 11. Wealth gotten by vanity shall be diminished, but he that gathereth by labor shall increase. Well, this is very sounds very much like some of the things that we've already heard, doesn't it? There is that maketh himself rich, yet hath nothing, probably because he's made himself rich according to the vanity of wickedness. Either that or he's made himself rich on the backs of somebody else. Well, again, the vanity of, of wickedness. So he doesn't have anything because whatever he has is just going to take wings and fly off. It's going to blow away like the chaff blows away, like the dust blows away. So, you know, this kind of richness ends up in poverty. But the man that makes himself poor, yet he has great riches. I Every, every time I read that, I think of the Beatitudes when Jesus said, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. You know, there's something wonderful about humbling ourselves under the mighty hand of God and just saying, you know, I'm not a rich man. I am a poor man. But I really have nothing without you, besides you, and because of you. So to make yourself poor rather than to think of yourself as rich and to humble yourself under God's hand and seek his presence, that it really is true riches. Verse 8, the ransom of a man's life are his riches, but the poor here is not rebuke. Of course, we understand that, don't we? We get how that works. Who's going to uh, who's going to kidnap someone that's poor? The poor man doesn't have anywhere to pay for a kidnap ransom, so there's no ransom for the poor man because he doesn't have it. You, you would only kidnap the rich man and say, pay up or else, right? So the poor man doesn't hear rebuke. Because he, he doesn't have anything for somebody else to take. So, which is better, riches or poverty? Verse 10, we come back to wisdom again. Notice verse 10 and verse 1. Verse 1 said, A wise son hears his father's instruction, but a scorner hears not rebuke. Verse 10, only by pride comes contention, but with the well-advised is wisdom. There's our theme of wisdom once again. We've read verse 11. Wealth gotten by vanity shall be dis- diminished, but he that gathereth by labor shall increase. So we understand this again goes right along with our work theme up there in verse 4. It's all about diligence, not slothfulness. You're gathering by labor, and if you gather by labor, that wealth will increase. But wealth gotten by vanity, you know, the emptiness of wickedness, what's it going to do? It will be diminished. Look back up again in verse 7. There is that that maketh himself rich, yet hath nothing. Why? Because wealth gotten by vanity blows away. Desire is another theme that pops up here in this chapter. There are several, and if you look at the bottom of the outline, uh, on page 2 of the outline, you'll see I have these numbered. So we have wisdom five times in this chapter, wealth five times, righteousness four times, speech three times, desire work twice, and then the, that last line there shows you all the one-time occurrences in the chapter. Desire occurs twice here, once in this section and then once in the um, section in chapter four, verse 14 through 14 through 25. Hope deferred makes the heart sick, but when desire comes, it is a tree of life. We sure understand that, don't we? We uh, when whenever we keep putting off. Hope whenever we keep putting off what is to come. We say, well, now it's not going to come for another three days. Now it's not going to come for another month. Now it's not going to come for another six months. Now it's not going to come for another year. You get sick of that. But then when what you desire actually arrives, when it comes, man alive, is that a tree of life? Yeah. And then we have this final one, the Word of God. This occurs only once here in the chapter. But you'll notice verse 13, whoso despises the Word shall be destroyed, but he that feareth the commandment shall be rewarded. So that goes right hand in hand with our wisdom theme. 
Only by pride comes contention, but with the evil, but with the well advised is wisdom. And then verse one, the wise son hears his father's instruction. Again, we know what the father's instruction is. It's the word of God. So this connects very nicely with verse one. If you despise the word, you're going to be destroyed. But if you fear the commandment, you'll be rewarded. Now we come to the second half of the chapter, beginning in verse 14. Again, we start with wisdom. This is the instruction of a wise man. The law of the wise is a fountain of life to depart from the snares of death. Favor is next. Verse 15, good understanding giveth favor, but the way of transgressors is hard. Prudence. Every prudent man dealeth with knowledge, but a fool layeth open his folly. Faithfulness. A wicked messenger falleth into mischief, but a faithful ambassador is health. Okay, so we have three things here, three ideas that occur only once, favor, prudence, and faithfulness, and they all occur under this rubric of the wise man who's teaching, and he's going to give us a fountain of life, and that fountain of life is depart from the snares of death, and we do that, we're going to look at 15, 16, and 17, right in a row, boom, boom, boom. Favor, prudence, faithfulness. All of these things are important for us to have that fountain of life, that blessing, that grace that a good man receives in life. We come back to the theme of wealth in verse 18. Poverty and shame shall be to him that refuses instruction, but he that regards reproof shall be honored. You'll see wealth also appears there in verse 22. A good man leaves an inheritance to his children's children, and the wealth of the sinner is laid up for the just. So we have wisdom here twice in this section. We had it three times over in the first section, the instruction of the father. Now with the instruction of the wise man, he talks about poverty. We're talking about wealth in the first part. He comes out with poverty. He says, poverty and shame shall be to him that refuse instruction. Do you notice how well that connects with verse 1? A wise son hears his father's instruction. Well, that's what we had in the very first statement there in in the chapter. We come now to the instruction of the wise man, and he says, Poverty and shame shall be to him that refuse instruction. So now we understand what he meant there in verse 1. A scorner shall shall not hear rebuke. He's a scorner because he doesn't hear instruction. And what's he going to have? Poverty and shame. But he that regards reproof shall be honored. This is almost a reversal of verse 1, isn't it? Again, desire pops up here. Verse 19, the desire accomplished is sweet to the soul, but it is an abomination to fools to depart from evil. Verse 20 is another wisdom piece. He that walketh with wise men shall be wise, but a companion of fools shall be destroyed. This comes over into the New Testament. Actually, the Apostle Paul tells us, and I cannot remember the the book of the Bible, I think it's Ephesians, where he t- he's telling the Ephesian church to be careful about associating with men who are outside of the church. You need to be careful because the people that you associate with, they're going to rub off on you. And so he, he warns them here. Righteousness, again, shows itself here in verse 21 and again in verse 25. Evil pursues sinners, but to the righteous good shall be repaid. And then verse 25, the righteous eateth to the satisfying of his soul, but the belly of the wicked shall want. Work is also capitalized on here in in verse 23. Much food is in the tillage of the poor. Again, it goes back to verse 7. Remember verse 7. But there is that is destroyed for want of judgment. So very much like verse 7. And then we have wisdom in verse 24. He that spareth his rod hateth his son, but he that loveth him chasteneth him betimes. We go back to the instruction of the Father here. It's good to be chastened. We don't think it's good at the moment, but we know it's good because chastening always leads us to wisdom. It helps us. That kind of instruction always helps us. We don't like it. None of us ever liked being disciplined by our parents, especially our Father. To disappoint them was one of the worst things that could happen. And so to chasten the son is a good thing. It's not going to hurt him one bit or her. All right, well, that takes us down to the end of the chapter. I hope you'll join me next week as we look at chapter 14 in the book of Proverbs, the School of Wisdom podcast. 
Hey, thanks for listening to the School of Wisdom podcast. If you're listening to this over YouTube, hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell so that you'll be notified every time one of these podcasts is uploaded. I really appreciate all my followers, and I try to respond to each and every one of your questions. Come again next week, and we'll enjoy another lesson in the School of Wisdom.